Where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? The world turns and the world changes, but one thing does not change. In all my years, one thing does not change. However you disguise it, this thing does not change. The perpetual struggle of good and evil. These piercing lines by T.S. Eliot from The Rock, written in 1934, lay out very plainly, which is unusual for Eliot, (laughs) but these lines leave no doubt about evil's pervasiveness as part of the human condition itself. On this Holocaust Remembrance Day, we are reminded once more of evil's inescapable reality and its unrelenting destruction of life and spirit. Psychologists like Eric Fromm define evil simply as life-denying, while M. Scott Peck characterizes evil as an entrenched self-deception that evil people practice. This thesis of self-deception, this thesis led to his book called People of the Lie, whereby he makes the observation that evil persons refuse to recognize the harm they do. Evil is treated as an act separate from or disconnected from themselves. In their hearts, writes Peck, They consider themselves above reproach. Peck also pulls evil into the political realm by identifying it as the exercise of political power, that is, the imposition of one's will upon others by overt or covert coercion in order to avoid spiritual growth. Wow. You, as well as I, may puzzle over what exactly that means. To impose one's will upon others in order to avoid spiritual growth. The short explanation is that evil persons attack rather than acknowledge their own failures and imperfections. Were they to make such acknowledgement, they would stand to grow spiritually, to become more whole, and loving persons. But they cannot bear the thought of their own imperfection. They attack the imperfection of others. Through the years, I have shared on occasion my own family's experience with the Holocaust, notably my grandmother's death in a concentration camp, my father's narrow escape to El Salvador, while his son, my half-brother, was carried off to England in the kinder transport at age eight. My mother living underground in Berlin with no ration card or ID papers. And there are obviously far more family members impacted by the Holocaust whom I have not mentioned, and I don't think I ever shared much about my cousin, 25 years my senior, but the same generation of cousins, Hans Goldschmidt, who resettled in Buenos Aires and built his life there. In Buenos Aires, he was known as Juan Goldschmidt. What kind of crazy name is that, Juan Goldschmidt? (laughs) But through a whole series of begats, the single biggest concentration of my family is in Argentina. I remember how his mother, my aunt, and I would rifle daily through the newspapers in that frightening period in Argentine history, the mid to late 1970s, desperately searching for any kind of information on the reign of military terror that seized Argentina, referred to as the Dirty War. 
Argentina's military dictatorship tortured, killed, or disappeared, what a euphemism, disappeared, 30,000 people, mostly union workers, leftist students, journalists, anyone leaning towards socialism. The Goldschmidts of Argentina survived, apparently not being as left-leaning as their cousin in Salt Lake City. <laughs> in 1981, I picked up a hot new publication by Jacobo Timmerman, his book, Prisoner Without a Name, Cell Without a Number, which describes in detail the brutal torture experienced by this journalist, Jacobo Timmerman, from Argentina. It was among those who disappeared. I read it again last week, thinking I might use some of it for a, a reading this morning. It would have been unconscionable if I did. Let me just say that evil does not mean just bad things happening or even indecent things. Evil is incomprehensible. It is absolutely inconceivable that any human being can think in this manner, let alone practice such brutality. Yet as threads remain woven into the fabric we call humanity. The world turns and the world changes, but one thing does not change. In all my years, one thing does not, one thing does not change. However you disguise it, this thing does not change the perpetual struggle of good and evil. And the far too many manifestations of evil, two in particular, have affected me directly the Holocaust and the Dirty War. The irony is not lost on me that the last two popes, Pope Benedict XVI and our recently elected Pope Francis, were directly connected to these dark periods in human history. Now, this is common knowledge, and it's not my intent to expose the popes or to diminish their commitment as religious leaders to about a billion Roman Catholics around the world. I'm interested, more generally speaking, interested in skeletons in the past, everyone's past, and how they may or may not impact our lives in the present. I want to consider these two recent popes as a kind of microcosm of how people's histories hold implications for the present, particularly in the areas of intolerance and diversity. Many people, not just the popes, would wish that some events of the past might quietly fall into oblivion be erased from the collective memory, thus allowing a fresh start. But we know it doesn't work that way. When pressed by the media about their complicity with Pope Benedict XVI, a member of the Hitler Youth, and Pope Francis, leader of the Jesuits in Argentina, offering no resistance to the dictatorship, both Popes remarked, again while, while pressed by the media, both popes remarked in almost identical fashion that they simply did not know the extent of the abuses going on at the time. They insisted that they cannot be held accountable because they just didn't know. The popes aspired to somehow disconnect themselves from evil by not knowing or by their own unmindfulness. 